You almost feel out of a job, at least as a pilot, when you fly on SpaceX's Crew Dragon. That's what many astronauts say after experiencing this next-generation spacecraft. After years of upgrades and testing, SpaceX has turned Dragon into one of the most refined and efficient crew vehicles ever built, leaving every other spacecraft, even Boeing's Starliner, struggling to keep up. And here is the secret. SpaceX built Dragon for the future, for the astronauts who will one day head to Mars, the generation that grew up using touchscreens, not rows of buttons and levers. Starliner, on the other hand, takes a more traditional route. It sticks with aviation-style controls that feel familiar to pilots. Of course, there is a clear trade-off between innovation and tradition. But in return, SpaceX has built a spacecraft so advanced that once astronauts experience it, it's hard to imagine flying any other way. Find out everything in today's Tech Map episode. What sets SpaceX's Crew Dragon? Apart from other spacecraft docked with the ISS. To understand that, it helps to compare it side by side with two other spacecraft, Boeing's Starliner and Russia's Soyuz. Both Crew Dragon and Starliner are modern American spacecraft, each designed to carry up to seven people, though NASA missions typically fly with four. The Soyuz, by contrast, is a product of an earlier era. It seats three tightly packed cosmonauts in a small descent module that prioritizes reliability and weight savings over comfort. That difference in design philosophy is clear. Developed in the 1960s, Soyuz separates into three modules, keeping its re-entry capsule small to simplify land landings under parachutes. Dragon and Starliner, using newer materials and technology, consist of just two major sections. This allows for a single large capsule with more interior space and upright seating arranged in two rows. Comfort, however, is not the only advantage. Both American vehicles integrate their launch escape systems directly into the spacecraft rather than relying on external towers, improving safety and reducing weight. Crew Dragon takes ease of use even further. Its large side hatch makes boarding simpler, even in full pressure suits. Once in orbit, astronauts can unbuckle and float freely inside its roomy 9.3 cubic meter cabin, spacious enough for movement in zero gravity. When its nose cone opens, the view from the wide observation window offers a panoramic look at Earth, turning the cabin into a small observatory. Boeing's Starliner is a bit tighter, with entry through a front hatch leading to a compact cockpit. It's practical for two pilots, but more confined for four crew members. The Soyuz, by comparison, has an even smaller top hatch, giving it one of the most restrictive interiors still in use. SpaceX's design clearly favors modern ergonomics and simplicity. Instead of hundreds of physical switches and knobs, Crew Dragon features large touchscreens that dynamically display only the information needed for each phase of flight, navigation, docking, or monitoring systems. This layout reduces clutter, streamlines operation, and allows astronauts to focus on key tasks while onboard computers handle precision maneuvers. The touchscreens are engineered for reliability, capable of functioning under vibration and acceleration, and are responsive even when operated with gloves. Tested under conditions similar to those in advanced fighter jets, they represent a leap forward in how spacecraft are flown. One of Crew Dragon's most remarkable achievements lies in the deep integration between its spacecraft systems and astronaut equipment. SpaceX designed its spacesuits to work seamlessly with Crew Dragon's touchscreen controls through gloves with conductive fingertips. This feature allows astronauts to tap, swipe, and operate displays accurately while remaining fully suited, crucial for manual control during docking or emergency procedures. The glove design uses capacitive materials similar to those found in touchscreen-compatible winter gloves, allowing reliable input without sacrificing protection. Astronauts Bob Bainkin and Doug Hurley trained extensively on these systems before their 2020 mission, refining their techniques to ensure precise operation even under vibration and acceleration. Boeing's CST-100 Starliner, though developed in the same era, reflects a different design philosophy. Its cockpit resembles a modern aircraft flight deck filled with numerous physical switches and controls. This approach stems from aviation's conservative nature 
where safety and familiarity remain central. Pilots and astronauts, many of whom come from aviation backgrounds, often prefer tactile feedback from physical buttons and toggles. Boeing's layout appeals to that familiarity. SpaceX, by contrast, represents a new direction. Although touchscreens in aerospace settings once raised safety concerns, NASA's approval of Crew Dragon's interface marked a significant vote of confidence. SpaceX invested heavily in testing and validation to prove that its fully digital control system could perform reliably under all mission conditions. Software-driven interfaces also offer flexibility. Unlike physical panels, which require hardware modifications for upgrades, touchscreens can be updated through software changes, allowing faster adaptation and long-term improvements. This adaptability aligns with future exploration goals, as the next generation of astronauts, those who will one day travel to Mars, will likely be more comfortable using digital interfaces than traditional control panels. No one understands these spacecraft better than the astronauts who have flown them. Their first-hand experiences highlight the unique character of each vehicle. Megan MacArthur, pilot of Crew-2, described SpaceX's Crew Dragon as a smooth and gentle ride. The ride was really smooth. We couldn't have asked for anything better, she said during the orbital tour, describing the gentle launch. Crew-1 commander Mike Hopkins praised the spacecraft's precision after docking, while Butch Wilmore and Suni Williams, who later flew on Dragon after their Starliner mission, noted its sleeker design with fewer buttons and totally automatic operation, and even joked about how there's more Velcro on SpaceX Dragon. Boeing's Starliner received its own praise from Wilmore, who said, the spacecraft handled remarkably well, much better even than the simulator, calling it fairly roomy for a two-person crew. SUNY Williams added, we have controls to fly the spacecraft. Butch got to do some manual piloting on the docking. After returning to Earth, both astronauts affirmed their confidence in Starliner's capabilities. The spacecraft is really capable. I'd get on Starliner in a heartbeat, appreciating its strong manual control features. The Soyuz, on the other hand, is often remembered for its cramped interior. Canadian astronaut Chris Hadfield, who flew a Soyuz mission to the ISS in 2012 to 2013, described, the Soyuz was very cramped and uncomfortable. The entire vehicle was filled with equipment and supplies. Each spacecraft reflects a distinct design philosophy. The Soyuz values durability rooted in decades of proven engineering. Starliner maintains aviation-style controls that appeal to pilot familiarity, and Crew Dragon moves toward digital automation and integrated technology. Together, they illustrate how human spaceflight continues to evolve from compact Soviet-era capsules to modern software-driven spacecraft built for the next generation of exploration. So, which one do you think best represents the future of human space travel? Soyuz, Starliner, or Dragon? Share your thoughts below. Another clear distinction between modern and traditional spacecraft lies in their use of automation. SpaceX's crew, Dragon, and Boeing's Starliner are designed to operate with minimal manual input. Both have proven they can complete entire missions without astronauts at the controls. Crew Dragon's Demo-1 mission in 2019 autonomously docked with the ISS, and Starliner's Orbital Flight Test 2 in 2022 did the same before its first crewed launch. Crew Dragon represents a fully modern approach to spacecraft design. About 99% of each flight, launch, orbit, docking, and re-entry, is handled automatically by its onboard computers and touchscreen interface. Astronauts mainly serve as supervisors, trained to take over only in contingency situations. During some missions, crews have performed brief manual control checks to confirm system performance, but otherwise the spacecraft flies itself. Starliner takes a slightly different approach, giving pilots more manual options. Its cockpit includes rotational and translational hand controllers for docking and attitude control. During Starliner's crew flight test, astronaut Butch Wilmore demonstrated manual piloting during approach due to the technical issues. Of course, in the normal condition, as said, the spacecraft was fully capable of completing docking autonomously. Automation is not the only area where the new generation of spacecraft stands out. 
SpaceX's Crew Dragon offers NASA a more affordable option at about $55 million per seat, compared with roughly $90 million for both Boeing's Starliner and Russia's Soyuz. Crew Dragon and Starliner can remain docked to the ISS for up to 210 days, about seven months, while the Soyuz must return after 180 days. This longer endurance gives NASA more flexibility in scheduling missions and better value for its investment. If you've stayed with us this far, here's a bonus insight. Why does SpaceX's Crew Dragon usually take much longer to reach the station than Russia's Soyuz? Crew Dragon's trip typically lasts between 19 and 30 hours, while Soyuz often completes the same journey in about three. The difference comes down to a mix of orbital mechanics, launch flexibility, mission planning, and each program's design philosophy. First, consider orbital mechanics. After launch, a spacecraft does not fly directly to the ISS. Instead, it enters a lower orbit and gradually adjusts its altitude through a series of engine burns, called phasing burns, to align its path with the stations. This process, known as a Hohmann transfer, relies on precise timing and positioning, which can naturally extend the total travel time. The next factor is launch timing. Soyuz missions are scheduled with extremely tight accuracy. They require a narrow phase angle, about 12 to 18 degrees, between the launch site and the ISS's orbital position. This precision allows for a rapid three-hour rendezvous, but leaves little room for flexibility. Crew Dragon, by contrast, is designed to handle a much broader phase angle window, typically between 170 and 320 degrees. That flexibility makes scheduling launches easier, especially when weather or technical delays occur, but it also results in a slower approach to the station. Mission priorities also influence timing. NASA and SpaceX place strong emphasis on crew safety, comfort, and workload balance. Docking operations are scheduled to ensure good lighting conditions, clear communication links, and alignment with the astronauts' sleep schedules. While this adds extra hours to the timeline, it helps ensure that the crew arrives well-rested and focused for the critical docking phase.